All right, guys, welcome to another Labia Domania vlog. Um, not much to talk about, really, even though this is like take fucking five, because for some reason the videos aren't saving. But it's letting me record them, so where the, where the fuck could they disappear to? But, um, yes, yeah, so um, I had a little bit of a trip to Manchester yesterday, just because I needed to get out of the house in the local area, to be honest. Ended up spending way too much money to the fact to the point where I'm pretty much skint for the rest of the month and I've only just rarely been paid so yeah that's always fun but um yeah so I went to CEX because I had some stuff that I was going to trade in you know one of those like you've watched it once you weren't really a big part fan of it but you sort of kept hold of it because it's like a cult classic that sort of thing but I've just got no time for just keeping stuff if I'm not interested in it. So I uh, took it to CEX and got actually a lot more than I thought I would. So I bought a few films. And before I get into that though, uh, watch this recently. Probably the best thing I've watched all week uh, since the last video. I might just do this every now and then. Kill Baby Kill by Mario Bava. Um, just an atmospheric, gothic masterpiece. A visually stunning, technically wonderful, just what a what a true visionary and uh, skillful director he was, and uh, yeah, fantastic stuff if you like your gothic horror. I would recommend though watch it in the original Italian language because it just adds to the atmosphere. There's no cheesiness to it, but yeah, it's brooding, it's moody, just fantastic. So. Went to CX, uh, picked some stuff up, so I'll quickly show that. I'm going to keep this as brief as possible. So, keeping on the Italian vibe, we've got four Italian films. We've got Galtiki, Il Monstro Immortale, directed by Riccardo Frida and Mario Bava. Riccardo Frida gets the main director's credit, but uh, from what I can tell, um, Mario Bava did you know, pretty much the majority of the directing as well as being the cinematographer. So uh, looking forward to that, going into that very blind, aside from reading the blurb. Uh, then we've got two of the Death Walk, well, the two Death Walks films by uh, Luciano Ercoli. And we've got Death Walks on High Heels and Death Walks at Midnight. Never watched these, so they're always good to add stuff in the Jello collection. Um, I know Arrow did a, a release where you got them both in the same thing. They came in a nice cardboard packaging. But um, yeah, so looking forward to these. Um, yeah, I think he did... Did he do three films, three jellos? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, looking forward to these two. Always good to add more to the jello collection. And then, just because I saw it, I know it's going to be cut, um, but I'm not too bothered about the, you know, the cutting out of the animal stuff. Doesn't make or break the viewing experience for me, really, so I can do with or without it. I just hope they don't, um, haven't butchered too much of the actual human violence. But, um, yeah, I know I can probably get much better uh, release of this, like the Grindhouse release and stuff. But I thought I'd, uh, I'd pick it up anyway because it's got um, the last interview with Umberto Lenzi, which is always interesting. And I heard there's a, a lot of hard work that's gone into restoration. Um, out of the two infamous cannibal films, I think this is sort of like the young, dirty punk. The young, punk, young, dirty, dirty, young, dirty, punk, younger brother. There we go. A little bit nastier, grimier. Doesn't have that sort of beauty that Holocaust has. And uh, then the last film I got, going all, all British, is The Ip Chris File. Now, directed by Sidney J. Fury. From 1965, starring Michael Caine, with an absolutely wonderful score from John Barry. Um, I heard the John Barry score before I actually... Well, I've not even watched it. But I've seen a re the trailers look good. It's my sort of, you know, British 60s crime. Well, it's not really a crime spy movie. You're in the same vein as like the 
uh, serialization of uh, Tinker Tail Soldier Spy, that sort of stuff, you know, smoky wood panelled boardrooms with people in cheap but fancy looking suits, thick rimmed glasses, little glass of whiskey and a cigar or a cigarette. I just love that sort of aesthetic. And uh, speaking of aesthetic, there's just something really satisfying about Michael Caine's appearance in that. So very, very excited to watch this. Uh, released by Network. So uh, another one for that collection. Uh, and then I went into FOP, just for a little bit of a mooch. Uh, picked up, even though I've never seen the film, so I'm becoming one of those people. Uh, Black Sabbath t-shirt. Directed by Mario Barber and starring, um, oh fuck, what's his name? It's like one of the true icons. You know who it, who it is. Boris Karloff, there we go. Thanks for that, yeah. So pick that up and uh, a Valerian Barov checkbox set, the Camera Obscura set, including short films, Theatre of Mr. and Mrs. Cabal, Gotto Isle of Love, Blanche, Immoral Tales and the Beast, five disc set. I have already seen uh, The Beast and Immoral Tales, so it'd be good to reacquaint myself with those, but everything else is completely new to me. Um, and I love the alternative artworks, which is basically Valerian Brovchek's sort of concepts and posters and that sort of thing. So art house, trashy, sleazy, uh, beautiful women in skimpy white, period dressing you know what i mean like the you know like the women out of horror where they've got the like the gown which is slightly see-through and just aesthetic much I'm saying aesthetic a lot in this video i uh, also picked up a copy of dark side even though i mocked it because i oh, was surprise surprise wanking over hammer horror again but it's just something to read and i want to get into uh back into reading about film so uh, that's the pickups. Uh, while I was in Manchester, went to a few places to uh, have a drink. Went to Brewdog, also had a burger, one of the messiest burgers I've ever had. Whatever little dignity I had beforehand, completely gone out the window. Um, but it was good though, really good. A couple of beers there. Um, went to vocations a uh, new place society which is sort of like a, a manchester mancunian version of um assembly underground one of my favorite ever places and they've done a really good job and just as much of a good range of beers and some of the food vendors there seemed really nice the pizzeria place looked good uh also went for a drink at the fierce bar which used to be marbles bar and then went to common to uh, have a drink and also have a slice of Nell's pizza. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And, uh, but nowhere near as beautiful as the fucking women who work in common. Jesus Christ. <sighs> I mean, I know the beer industry is going through a bit of a, a shitty situation with the how problematic it can be with themes of sexism and stuff. But, oh my God. That's the worst thing about being a single... But mind you, it's a distraction at the same time. I mean, I've been single since December, January. And it's just been an absolute fucking... I can't be single. Do you know I think I've come to that conclusion. I just can't handle single life. You're just yearning for that person all the time and blah, 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 blah. Um, and yeah, it was like in Manchester. It was lovely being there. I love an excuse to go around Manchester, whether it's going shopping, drinking... Did some clothes shopping, went to Lush as well, because I like to smell nice. Not much to look at, but I've got style, even though this T-shirt's way too sort of baggy on me. But it's Roy Lichtenstein, so... Yeah, I went to Uniqlo, uh, Lush, just some other random places. Got a little bit too pissed, lost my umbrella, had to buy another one before I came home. And, uh, yeah, it's just, I love going around Manchester. It's just... One of my favourite places of all time. But it sure was fucking lonely. Do you know what I mean? And you're seeing all these people all happy together. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not one of those people who's like hate seeing that. Because fair play if you've got someone 
uh, you know, make the most of it. Because it's all going to come crashing down eventually. Only joking. Not that cynical yet. But, um, yeah, and also it made me miss, but also has made me excited at the prospect of actually meeting up with people for drinks again. Going on some beer adventures and, you know, the beer folk. I mean, I've got uh, Southport coming up with Adam, a.k.a. Mersey Beers, on Monday. Which is going to be interesting because I'm going to be absolutely wankered on Sunday because it's a work sort of get together and I'm going to be hanging out my ass um, on Monday. But um, yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Like how you can just be completely reminded of how single and insignificant you can be. But uh, yeah, there was some some nice sounds so fucking disgusting talking like this. But there was some nice talent on show in Manchester there always is but um yeah I'm just a 50 year old pervert now um even though I'd I mean I punch above my weight and somehow managed to get every now and then someone interested but I would be completely punching above my weight although by the I was definitely punching above my own weight with my ex so yeah do you know what I mean Where's this going? I don't know. I'm going to end the vlog here. But um, yeah, I had a lovely day in Manchester. Got a little bit tipsy. Enjoyed the views and picked up some good films. Uh, next podcast is going to be 10 of my favourite films of all time. I'm calling it that, not calling it a top 10 films because I don't own... Well, I've not really gone into detail compiling a list yet, but... There will be films that I absolutely love and adore that for some reason I just don't own in on a physical copy. So I won't be including those. Uh, massive thank you, by the way, to uh, everyone who has been tuning into the podcast, even though it's just been one episode and introduction and then three parts me looking at DVDs and Blu-rays. But I love the uh, interaction. It's really getting me back into the swing of producing content. Beer reviews are coming back again. They didn't go away. I was just too lazy to actually upload them, transfer them from like my Google Drive. To... Got so many, so I'm going to be uploading them as and when they come. You might see a couple a day. If it's from the same brewery, I might upload them a few at a time. We shall see. But uh, yeah, I'm also going to hopefully be expanding this backdrop. We shall see. And hopefully this video will actually save properly so I can upload it. Anyway, so yeah, thank you for watching. If you've seen any of those films, let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. Any ideas, suggestions or questions or anything like that uh, for potential future episodes of the podcast, then feel free to let me know down below also. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. You all take care. You all stay safe. Have a lovely day, evening, morning, whatever time of day it is. And I shall hopefully see you all later. Cheers.